He founded Fighting Bob Fest and FightingBob.com. And he challenged right-wingers in the political sphere. And let me tell you a little something you probably don't know about Ed Garvey that relates to what's been going on here the last month. It was Ed Garvey, right after the elections in November, who recognized the risk that we all faced. It was Ed Garvey who realized we had to respond. It was Ed Garvey who called together dozens of people for a couple of meetings to brainstorm about how to respond. And some of those people in those meetings included such stalwarts who've done an incredible job over the last couple months. Mark Pocan and John Matthews. So it was Ed who really understood that when stuff was going to hit the fan, and boy, did it ever hit the fan, that we would need to be prepared. So that's Ed Garvey for you, always thinking ahead. Here's Ed Garvey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Some thank you. I assume that's for this button. Jim Hightower for president. Thank you very much. Well, listen. Matt asked me if I could please come out here and say something good about our governor. He said, I've always been shy in these audiences, and so he said, you know, you're the right person to just try to be nice to him. So here's what I thought about. It is not that he lies, it's that he has such a high regard for the truth, he uses it sparingly. <laughs> I am so proud of this state, of, of you, of the progressive, all the people in this room, of the Fab 14. Think about what they did for us. Senator Tim Carpenter, Spencer Coggs, Tim Cullen, John Erpenbach, Dave Hansen, Jim Holprin, Bob Jow, Chris Larson, Julie Lassa, Mark Miller, Fred Risser, Lena Taylor, Kathleen Vineout, Bob Wersch. Let's hear it for them and thank them for what they did for us. We couldn't have done it without them. Couldn't agree more. Now, I'm on a mission, and I want to tell you what it is. I rented this hall for the 6th of April. Now, does, does anyone here know what's going to happen on the 5th of April? Those of you who have planned to vote on the 5th of April, please stand up. And while we never take positions or endorse people, here is something that Betty Garvey created. A vote for Prosser is a vote for Walker. So once again, I'm trying to help our governor. Kloppenberg for Supreme Court Justice. As a lawyer, I'm embarrassed by our court. I'm embarrassed at the thought that Wisconsin manufacturers and commerce think they can buy justices for our Supreme Court. We demand that they get their, their money out of our politics. We want fairness in our Supreme Court. We don't want to have corporate uh, puppets uh, dancing on strings that are, are pulled by those behind the, the screen. I'm not going to take long because I stand between you and people like Dennis Kucinich and Jim Hightower. And don't we have a lot of people to thank before we get there? How about Michael Moore? Did he hit the nail on the head or what? And I was afraid we lost John Nichols to CNBC for a while, but he's back. John, thank you for all the work that you've done. It's been phenomenal. But when Michael Moore said, we're not broke, didn't that sink in? Because if we were broke, you know what we would see? Troops home from Afghanistan and Iraq and from Europe, and instead of cutting and fair, fair taxes, rather than the nonsense that we see now.
So I'm on a mission on the 6th of April, right here. We are going to have one hell of a party. That's a small P party. Because we think it is time to restore fairness to the Supreme Court of the state of Wisconsin. And I want to make sure that you're all here to celebrate it. If you can't be here, or if you feel differently, why don't you leave? Because you're not going to enjoy the rest of the program. Just kidding. Let me close by just saying this. There's, all of us have lived through so many different battles. Tonight, I couldn't help but think about uh, Midge Miller. I couldn't help but think about Granny D. Haddock. I couldn't help but think about Nan Cheney and, and so many of the good people, Gaylord Nelson, people who would love to have seen the crowds that we saw today. Have you ever in your life imagined we'd have 150,000 people gathered on the, on the steps of the Capitol and on the lawn? And I'm proud to say that the new estimate is in the cost of the destruction of the lawn today will be $1,857 million. And we're going to take up a collection to make sure we get a good head start on it. This feels so good at the moment, but we have to win it. We have to win it. We have to win it. We cannot let them regain their balance. They're on their heels. Let's keep pushing forward. If you push forward, we'll push with you. And I will see you on the night of April 6th for one hell of a time. And Mad Rothschild will buy the beer. Thank you.